Okay, morning guys. This is take two. This is taking a lot of setup. Um, hopefully this is gonna work. If not, I'll find a workaround. Um, but I've had to format this a little bit differently than normal because this um, simulation that you're looking at wasn't working on my home computer, so I'm having to do it on my laptop. My laptop doesn't have the recording material that I need or the recording program that I need to like screen record and all that. So this is the best I'm capable of doing. So hopefully this works. Um, like I said, if not, I'll let you guys know and I'll figure something out. But um, for today, we're going to do a continuation of what we talked about yesterday. We introduced the idea of gene regulation, turning genes on and off, and all that fun stuff. So I think today will be a really good uh, way of showing physically like what this would look like. I think yesterday was a lot of abstract ideas and I really like the simulation. I know I talked about it a lot yesterday because I think it does a really good job or good job of showing um, what each part of the gene does and you can see physically what's happening. Um, so let's go ahead and get right into it for the sake of time. Uh, there are questions on Google Forms for you to go, uh, follow along with. If you want to fill those up as this video is playing, that'd probably be the easiest um, thing to do. I'll try to make sure I cover all of them as we go through. So, um, first and foremost, we're going to look at the different parts of the gene and talk about what they do, and then we'll talk about what happens when parts don't work correctly. So, we are looking at the LAC operon, the LAC gene. The LAC gene has a couple different parts involved in order to regulate it, to, in order to turn it on and off. LAC is short for lactase. It is the gene responsible for producing lactase, which is the enzyme that produces or digests lactose, which I think you're all aware of. Lactose is the sugar that's found in dairy products and milk and cheese and all that stuff. Um, so we're going to look at how it works today and how it turns on and off, why you would need it to turn on and off. So first and foremost, the actual gene that codes for lactase, the actual functional gene that produces a protein, is the LACZ gene. Why is that not working? That's so weird. Okay. Either way, um, let's go ahead and get back into it. I'll cut that out. Either way. So let's talk about the LACZ gene. Uh, as you can see, it now is part of our DNA strand. We've inserted the LACZ gene, but for whatever reason, our ribosomes here, that's what these things are, um, are not coding it. They are not turning it into protein like they should be. And the reason for that is because in order to read a gene that is able to be turned on and off, it has to have a promoter. Um, it's very similar to primer, like we talked about with transcription and translation, before you can start copying the DNA and turning it into mRNA and protein and so on and so forth, you have to have a primer where it will bind so that you can have a place for the polymerase to attach to. Same idea here. You have to have a promoter. So we need our LAC promoter. Now the ribosome can bind, it will now be able to read the LAC-Z gene and it's going to produce our enzyme, which is lactase. You can see those floating around in the, in the cell right now. So the function of lactase as it floats around in the cell here, if we were to ingest a bunch of lactose, if you had a glass of milk or whatever may contain lactose in it, the lactase enzymes will digest and break it down and now you don't have any lactose floating around in the cell. So I can add more, but eventually they will get digested and broken down and all that. So functionally it's doing its job. However, we have a problem. You're not ingesting lactose 24 seven, at least I hope you're not because that's probably not healthy. <laughs> I'm not a dietitian though, so don't take my word for it. Um, so you're not, um, for the average person, you're not conju or conju I'm slow down. You're not consuming lactose uh, regularly or regularly enough to necessitate having all these um, lactase enzymes floating around all the time. So really, right now, what we're doing is we're wasting a lot of time and resources on making these lactose lactase enzymes when we don't really need them. So we're going to need to learn how to shut them off. That's what the operator is for. If you remember from yesterday, the operator is the part of the gene responsible for turning certain parts on and off. However, if you notice, it's not doing its job right now. There's nothing stopping it, even though we have the operator there. That's because the operator binds a repressor molecule and the repressor molecule is not present yet. And that's where the LAC I gene comes in. So LAC I gene is responsible for producing that repressor. The repressor is going to bind the operator and form a block where the ribosome is not gonna be able to pass it and it's not gonna be able to code the genes. Just like last time, we need a promoter. So now we can start reading the gene once the ribosomes make their way over there. So now we can also read the LAC I gene. LAC I gene pro er, produces the repressor. As you can see, that repressor is gonna fit nice and neatly right in there. And now it's formed kind of like a padlock on the gene. This ribosome can't get past that big blocky section. It can't run over the repressor to get to the LACZ gene. So now we can't produce lactase and we will not be wasting resources. But 
Now what happens if we suddenly ingest a bunch of lactose and we do need the gene to be turned on? We can't have this gene off all the time. Well, if you notice on the back of these here, there are little notches where something will be able to bind and that something is lactose. Lactose will be able to bind the ends of the repressor molecules and as you can see, it changes their shape. Imagine if you took a, I'm trying to think of a good example. If you change the shape of the lock, the lock no longer will fit the key and the key won't work on it. So it's the same idea here. They're causing a conformational change where it will no longer fit the, uh, the operator and now it can't bind anymore. So now the enzymes are able to be coded for and we can digest them in the cell. And once they're all digested again, now there's no lactose binding those operators and the operator goes back to being bound and the cycle starts all over again. So as you can see, this gene's transcription is directly related to the presence or absence of lactose, which is what makes it regulatory, which is what makes it able to turn on and off. Um, I think that's pretty much it for the introductory section. I'm trying to think, I feel like I'm forgetting something. Um, but yeah, so because we are turning this gene on it is naturally in the off state when there is nothing present that makes it an inducible gene. That is one of your questions for today if you're paying attention. Um, if it was constantly on, so if right now without any lactose, this operator was unbound and we were coding for the gene, um, and then instead of turning the gene on, the lactose was turning the gene off, that would make it a repressible gene, but that is not what's happening here. Um, so to wrap up, there's a couple questions at the end talking about mutations in your lac operon and the potential uh, ramifications of that. So let's take a look at those. So what would happen if, for example, there was a mutation in the lac I genes? This is no longer present. So because of that, now there's no gene responsible for producing the operator, or repressing, or for pr producing, I can't talk this morning, the repressor. Um, so it'd be the same thing as if it wasn't there. So now if there's no repressor, there's nothing turning the gene off. Um, that gene is always going to be code for, coded for now. It has now become a constitutive gene. It is now always on. You are producing lactase even when you don't need it. There is no lactose in the cell. Um, and the gene will just always be on. So that is what that mutation would do. Now, what would happen if there was a mutation in the lac? Oh, let's actually leave that off. Let's see, what would that be, or what would happen if there was a mutation in the lac Z gene? So if there's a mutation in the lac Z gene, as if there was nothing there. That means that there's nothing to code for these lactase enzymes. There's nothing to code for these proteins here. So we'll wait for those to go away in just a second and take a second. There we go. So now that there's nothing coding for the lactose or lactase enzyme, even if we introduce a bunch of lactose, there's nothing to code for the enzyme that would break those things down. So those just stay there. They stay floating around in the cell and they don't get broken down. And this is what leads to people being lactose intolerant. That's a real world application of this. Um, the reason why people are lactose intolerant is because the gene that produces this enzyme either isn't functional or doesn't function the way that it should. And they don't produce either enough lactase or any lactase at all to digest the lactose that they've ingested. And instead of being digested, it just sits around and isn't able to go anywhere. So that's what causes the stomach aches and the pain and the gas and that kind of stuff. So. Um, However, you can't take lactase pills that can be produced artificially, and you can take lactase pills if you have lactose products, and it should help um, with the digestion of that enzyme, or that sugar. So I think that's it. Hopefully this works. Like I said, I had to do this a little bit differently. Sorry, this is a little bit late, but I had to do a lot of problem shooting with this one to try and get it to work. So hopefully that works. Hopefully this makes sense, and let me know if you have questions. I'm willing to make this a two-day thing if I need to. I'm not sure if I need to. I think it's fairly short, but it might be confusing. So we'll see how today goes. Shoot me some emails if you have them. If I have a lot of people that are struggling with this, I'll see what I can do and I'll let you guys know. Um, but otherwise, we'll do another activity with this tomorrow to round out the week. So let me know if you have questions and I will see you guys tomorrow.